Okay, I'd like to show you how to add a news story to the BEC2 website. As you'll see, if you're a branch editor and you're logged in, as I am, you will see my uh, pages here, you'll see branch web pages. You can click on that and you go to the home page of, the, of your branch website, which in my case is animation and new media. Okay, now this the animation new media site hasn't been developed, so it's a good one for me to, to, to demonstrate this on. What I'm going to do is, there are other sections on the site. Today I'm going to just show you how to update the news section. <coughs> so, you'll see that there's an update this introduction button, a blue button, and one called submit news. You're about the only person that can see these blue buttons. Only the, only the people who are in the membership database as the branch web editors for animation and new media can see those blue buttons. No one else can. So if you imagine the page without those blue buttons, that's what everyone else sees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to submit a news story. Okay, so you'll see, in order to add a news story, you're provided with a form. And it's as simple as that. Now what I've done is, in preparation for this, I've written a news story in Microsoft Word to freelancers okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the story a title there we are it's one I prepared earlier Heron makeup masterclass for Beck 2 members now you'll see the next two fields are ones that you don't need to worry about this site has been built to allow some parts of the site to be indexed by search engines but because your news stories will be on a private part of the website. Uh, search engines can't see them anyway, so completely ignore keywords and description. The stand first, however, is very important. Give the, your news story a short description. So let's have a look at the news story. I think that is a good enough stand first, isn't it? The first, uh, the first sentence, Mac Pro is to deliver a masterclass for Beck2 members demonstrating two exciting looks for theatre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste that. I'm going to hold down the control key and the C key and I'm going to cut and paste it. And because this is just a straight plain text field, there won't be a problem with it. So I'm going to put it into the stand first, summary stand first field and there we have it. Now the next thing I need to do, uh, well the next thing I need to do is to post the main body of the story in the HTML editor and that's what this is. An HTML editor is a bit like Microsoft Word. It, you can make text bold, you can highlight it, you can turn it into bullet points, and so on. So you have all of that functionality. So what we need to do is we need to take this story that you've written, and we need to put it into that HTML editor. But, and this is a really important thing to remember, Microsoft Word has lots of hidden code in it. A HTML editor relies on hidden code. And the annoying thing about this is that Microsoft Word and the HTML editor have different bits of hidden code. If you put a Microsoft Word document straight into here, it will look terrible. So the thing to do is to cut and paste all the copy from your letter, from your article, into something, an application that's on every machine if you're on a Mac, it's called Text Edit, and if you're on a PC, it's called Notepad, and it's just a simple application, simple tool that allows you to get a clean copy of, um, of, of a document. So I'm going to highlight all the text in this document, and the quick way to do that is hold down the Control key and um, hold down the A, which is Select All. Then I'm going to copy it, which is Control C, hold down the control key, hold down the C key, and then I'm going to open Notepad. And you'll find Notepad if you're on the, on the Windows PC, go to your programs, go to accessories, and Notepad will be there in the, in the program menu. So I'm going to open Notepad, there it is. I'm going to cut and paste the text by holding down control V, which is paste, control C, copy, control V, paste, and there's your text. You'll find sometimes that you're the, uh, the, if it's the first time you're using Notepad, it may look like that. You may have very long lines and no paragraphs, where 
where, the, where the, the paragraphs go off into the distance. Long paragraphs, so just one single line. If that happens, just go Format, Word Wrap, and it'll turn it into paragraphs. Let's put the spaces in at the end of the paragraphs. Here we are. I'm going to put those spaces in, preparing the document. Okay, and I'm going to then, so that's ready. Now I'm going to do Control A again, select all, Control C, put it into the document. Now what we can do is we can um, have a look at that and format it a little bit. So event details, let's make that bold. Um, Let's put those as bullet points. There we are. Let's add venue, colon. Now, let's say you had on another web page the flyer for this. I don't have a, a, a flyer prepared, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a, a URL, an ordinary web address. Okay, let's imagine that you have a flyer already on another website and that's the website address of it. So you highlight that, ad that address and go into here. And so download the event flyer. And you make that a hyperlink by seeing that link there, insert link. And what I've done is I've cut and paste that address, that address from the last page. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna put my cursor in there, click in there Go Control V and then insert. And there we have it. So that will now be a clickable link that will go through to my imaginary flyer. I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm going to delete it straight afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to make that bold because I think that's an important line as well. I'm going to make that italicize it. I'm going to italicize that. Now, I've, I've already posted a video telling you how to um, post pictures, but here we go. I'm going to aim for a picture that's smaller than 460 by 460. I prefer ones that are considerably smaller than 460 by 460. So what I've done is I've clicked on that. It takes me through to my pictures folder. There we go. There's an image. This one, if you hover over it, it's 120 by 117 pixels. So that's okay. 13.2 kilobytes, nice and small. I've done another video telling you how to prepare pictures for the web. Do, do have a look at that. But I'm going to just add that. There we go. I'm going to give it a, a caption a football yesterday. There we are. I'm going to give it some alt text. Alt text is very important on an image for, um, for people who are using screen readers. Um, I'm not going to bother with the author. I'm just going to put don't bother with the author. That field doesn't really display on the site anyway. I'm going to add a contact name, Peter Piper. You'll see I've done this before. I'm going to add a contact number. There's a made-up contact number I've just done. I'm going to add a, a made-up contact email there because this is a demo. And I'm going to add a fax number and a website. There we go, contact website. That's the website of the, of the thing, of the story we're doing. And when I hit send, and there you go, it'll say the news article is successfully submitted and shown here. That means the story has been added. There's the picture. There's the story. There's the link that goes to our imaginary flyer, which isn't really a flyer. Um, but you'll see I've inserted the link. There's the contact stuff on it. And then when we go to the news section, just go back and look at it. You'll see where the stand first appears. Um, there it is. You can see the stand first. That's the bit I put in the stand first field, and that that will tell people what's what the the story um, is about.